Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel. I'm gonna have to give the Jagger wash this time because this time I'm gonna get it in the garage in a minute and we're gonna fit a body kit on it. Let me show you what I've bought. So yeah, I've had a uh, trip over to Maxton Design and this is what they sold me. So I've got a nice carbon fiber effect front splitter. I've got the side skirts as well and I've got the rear side skirts there to go around the back. So we're gonna get all this fitted just for you and I'm gonna take you along for the ride. So let's get started. So looking uh, at this splitter uh, to actually try and line it up before we even get to fitting it. So if I just lift up this side here, it's going to go nowhere near because underneath the actual bumper, you have this little piece here. This goes all the way around there. Now, if you watch my video on fitting the cold air intake, you'll have seen that this comprises many, many screws on it on. But what I'm going to do is, I don't think we're going to need this. This is just going to be in the way. So I'm going to remove this all the way around now. And uh, that's going to be the first part. There off, we can have a look underneath and see if we can try and fit this new splitter. So it actually looks like we need to take this off as well. So that's just a few eights all in that one. So let's get this off. The trial fit so yeah don't worry about all this there's a plastic coating on this so that's all going to come off at the end when we've finished um yeah so looking pretty good so it's like underneath here this kind of it goes right in curve shape and this pushes into that so that's how you know you've got it perfectly aligned because that has to be in that bit of a delve there let me just show you underneath so you see this bit here so this bit here goes into the same shape on the under tray and you get that in on one side and make sure that's in on the far side and then you basically that's it it's lined up right i've been thinking about this now i think to do this job properly it's going to be a bumper off then it's going to be a lot easier to work on and problem being is that they send you uh, nuts nuts and bolts and washers but you need to be able to get your hand inside the under tray to fit those and then you can't do that without taking the under tray off but then if you take the under tray off, the bolts are going to be... Anyway, it was the same with Mustang. I had the same problem. So let's get this bumper off and then we'll see the best way of fitting it. Um, so that enables me, hopefully, to remove the under tray without having to take the bumper off again in the future, which is what I want. Let's get this bumper off and then we can have a look at it then. So it's jacked up and wheels off. Didn't bore you with that. And let's go underneath uh, and look at these uh, arch liners and I'll show you what you need to undo to get this bumper off. So this inner wheel arch liner uh, connects to the front bumper through one two three four and five of these t30s so let's remove those so i'll go to the other side now and then we'll carry on i'll show you what's next so underneath there uh, this uh, lower front bumper pan and um, we've got one two three and four 10 mils to remove that should release this under tray from the frame of the car and the rest of it's held on with bolts near the front so that this will come off with the bumper now so back on the top of the bumper we've got one two three four five six along the front there and then we've got these two on each side here So to remove this bumper, you've got this water supply here to the headlight washers. So that's got to be removed on this side. And on the other side, you've got them two plugs down there that are going to need to be unplugged to get the bumper off. In my case, I've also got this extra wire here, which is my trickle charger. Now, I never thought this through. I might have to cut this and, um, and then put a connector in between because to get my bumper off now, I don't think I can push the trickle charger itself through that gap. So I'll figure that one out anyway. So now with this off there, uh, you can get a better view. So if you see this bit here, this is the bit I was on about, the way it curves in there and the way that curves in there. And you found that the uh, splitter actually has those. So I guess you put them in there and then you've got that perfectly set up. So you see all these holding the under tray on. If you put your splitter on and bolt it through here somewhere, 
then you're never going to be able to you could i could do it on the bench but then to actually ever get this splitter off or to remove this this uh, lower tray i'm going to have to take the whole bumper off every single time to take my splitter off to then be able to un undo the tray so i'm hopefully i'm going to try and find a solution like i did with a mustang where i can possibly use these to hold my splitter on and then I shouldn't have to remove the whole bumper to get the under tray off. So let me just investigate that and I'll get back to you and tell you what I found. Yeah, so as you can see, it fits nicely. It goes into the shape of the under tray like that at that end and that side there. So once you've got those two pieces in, then obviously, you know, you've got it exactly lined up at those sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the under tray bolts that are holding it in place and put these back in. And then I think I'm going to drill from the other side so the these bolts here so i'm going to go drill through these and that will give me the marker so that i can actually use those same bolts that hold the under tray on to actually hold my splitter in place so to make this much easier so i can mark on the back of me uh splitter where these holes are these um sort of clips just clip on there and they give you the uh the bolt hole so i've popped all them off of these points here and then when we had them sort of little bits that were just down the edge there, they were screwed on with these things, which just pop into, into those holes there. So I've removed those as well. So I can actually use them as well to give it some more stability. So looking on here, I've got, I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm going to have plenty of places that I can actually secure the splitter on. So let me pop this back on using these four bolts here. And, uh, and then we can line it all up and then we can mark it up and then start drilling the holes in the splitter. All right, from this side, so I've clamped on uh, the splitter that side and I can now get to these holes here and I should be able to mark them through onto the underside of the splitter. And then we can take it off and drill the holes and put the clips back on and we should be able to bolt that back up. A few moments later. Right, I've done it. So let me show you what I've done. So um, I took all of the fittings for the back of these off and then marked through onto the back of the new splitter. And then I took the splitter off, drilled a load of holes to capture all of these all the way around. And now I've used all the original fixings that were on the car, which held on this under tray to actually mount this. So that means if I want to just take the under tray off, it's no worse than it was before. I just got to undo all of these to remove this one piece, which before used to be lots of other little pieces that you need to remove to get to the under tray um, bolts. These ones are still obviously available here because you used to have that little sort of a uh, lip that was sat in there. Don't have that anymore. Don't have this here because we've got this now to protect us. So that is the original fitting from that hole there. Those are the original fittings that held on that little sort of a flap that just went down there. That is the original fitting for the under tray. That is one of the supplied uh, bolts because they're just slightly longer. And because some of these on the under tray recess, that just manages to capture the actual uh, nut fitting on the other side. So I need that there and there. Really, I need there because the washer that's built in into this uh, bolt here doesn't catch on there, whereas the original ones, which are quite big, it did catch on there. That's that there. Further down, again, one of the new ones because just need a bit more depth. Here, I needed a lot more depth because the original bolts up to the under tray here are pretty well recessed inside the under tray. So I needed a longer bolt. So I've just created it. I've just used one of my own bolts there with the washer on. Yes, the middle one, uh, I did need to adjust the hole that I drilled because I, I was marking the hole at an angle like that from inside. Um, so it was a bit low, but I've lifted it up and then that's gone through there nicely. And then it's exactly the same on the other side as it is this side. So that ain't coming off. There's 16 uh, bolts holding that on. Um, so yeah, that, that's fine. That ain't going anywhere. So next stage is for me to refit this bumper back to the car. Bumper back on. Now it's time for the wheel arch liners and the wheels and get off these jack stands. To the side skates as i say and i've used the jocks chocks of wood again just to raise it to the position and i think i'm happy with where that is sitting now uh now the only problem is i've got to get underneath there to put some screws in 
so I think I'm gonna to have to jack the car up to do it so let's get the car jacked up at this side that's gonna be plenty of room to be able to get the screwdriver in and then we'll line it up again so I car all jacked up uh, and I've used some other axle stands I've got there to actually uh, jam the uh, side skirt into the correct position I'm happy with the position now what I've got to do I've got to take it down again because I've got to pull off the uh, the actual uh, covering that is on here look so it's plastic coated to protect it so I need to pull it off get it back in position again and then what I've got is I've got one of these which is an attachment because these are the screws that we're going to use to hold it on so this actually just fits nicely into them it's got a magnet in it as well um, let's put them in there so like that and so that will enable me to drive these in underneath using standard drill so I'm going to take this off again get the plastic off get it back in position and then we can get it all drilled in position now it does say in the actual instructions you need to glue this in place but I don't know what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit it using uh, those uh, bolts see how it goes if I find this flapping about a bit then I can always pop it off put some glue on and put it back on again I just don't fancy putting the glue in between the sides gate and the existing side part of the car because it might damage it if I ever decide I want to take these off so I'm going to go without the glue for now and, and I'll just see how it, how it goes if it flaps I'll put some in Alright, so this is the underneath and as you can see I've got all of the bolts in now I had some extra sort of screws which I've, I've used before so I put these ones in as well just to kind of stop it sort of flapping a bit because it was just a little bit flappy but now I put those in it's nice and solid so that's brilliant so I've got the ones in at the back there as well so yeah so that's all held on nicely so it's time for me to now go do the other side I won't video that because it's exactly the same as this side. That's the other side done, so now let's check out these rear side splitters. Okay, here we are at the rear side skirts. Um, this has been a little bit fiddly to get on. Let, let me just uh, show you what I've had to do to get this. This loose at the moment, I'm just still trial fitting it, but let me just show you underneath where I've done the mountings. So what you find in the actual side skirt, you get a moulding piece round here, and this is covering two screw holes, which are part of the... Uh, casing for this round the back and there's also one here so what I've managed to do I've took the screw of the uh, actual uh, valance and I've put it through this I, I kind of located the hole and I've I drilled a hole and put it through I've done the same with one here there is another screw there but it's a bit too close to this edge so really if I do it it's going to catch that edge there so I'll just do the one and then uh, I drilled two there because I didn't think I can get up here but I can if underneath here there's the actual valance and there's a metal plate as well but you can kind of force your finger in and get a bit of a gap so you can get a, a nut and bolt through there so I'm going to get one in there I just haven't got the bolt on yet because I've got to take this off to take the plastic off so I can't uh, tighten it up just yet so I've got one in there and then I've got two under here uh, you can't get one in at this far edge here unfortunately but them two will hold it so yeah that's uh, that's going to hold it well we we'll take these back off now uh, to peel off the plastic and then we can get this finally fit. So while I've got this off, just let me show you these. So this, this here and this here is the bits that hold this lens in. So I'm using that screw and I'm going to use that screw. That one is just a bit too far on the outside to use, so I'm not using that. And there she is installed so yeah that looks lovely so uh, i'm gonna go do the other side and i'll get back to you when it's finished that's it everything installed let's get this car out the garage into the daylight and check out what this looks like <laughs> Oh, 
and that I think looks amazing. This is a fantastic kit for the price, really easy to fit and if you follow my video you can fit it so it's easily removable along with the under tray. Hope you enjoyed this, if you did don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give me that thumbs up for more videos like this. See you on the next one.